Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier and in my this particular video I am going to uh, show you how you can write MATLAB code for multi-class classification using binary classification of support vector machine whatever we have discussed in my previous video, okay. So the fundamental idea which we are going to use is basically one versus all or one versus rest concept for multi-class classification, okay. This algorithm I have already discussed in detail in my previous video. If you want to know about this particular algorithm in detail, then you can check, check the link given in the description, okay. If you know, well and good, no problem. So what I am going to do, I am basically going to create total many binary classifier using SVM. And what will be the number of binary classifier? That will be equal to total number of unique classes present in our data set. Like here, three different classes are present. So here we have formed three different uh, binary classifier. And then the new data point uh, for which we want to predict that that particular data point is belonging to which class, we will uh, basically pass that data point through all the classifier. Okay. And that data point is belonging to the positive uh, class of each classifier, what is the probability of that we are going to calculate and the maximum probability whatever we will be getting belonging to one particular uh, class that uh, we will conclude that the newly uh, coming data point is belonging to that class as simple as that, right? So whatever I have told same thing here MATLAB implementation is happening, okay? No need to worry about the code, code will be posted in the description box, okay. CLC clear all, close all, warning off, okay, generally what we write. Then I am basically importing our popular data set, some error we are getting, okay, warning off, sorry, spelling mistake. So here first we are importing our iris data set. right, I hope you know iris setosa, iris virginica, iris versicolor, different things are there. See in workspace you will be getting two different uh, variables, okay. In MEAS, this one, our sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width, all these things are stored. And in species, whether that is iris virginica, iris versicolor, iris setos, or those are stored. You can double click on this and you can check the data set, okay. See here, these are values. This is sepal length, second column is sepal width, next one is petal length, next one is petal width. And if you double click on species, you will be getting setosa. Then if I just scroll below, then farsi color and the last one is virginica. Okay. I am closing my variable window because I just opened that to show you. Okay. So what I am doing, I am doing uh, storing my independent variables. Okay. In X and the species which is outcome in Y. Okay. And then plotting the data set using GIS, GS scatter. What it will do, it will plot according to group of our data set, okay? Like all the status will be given a particular color, all the virginica uh, will be given a particular color, all the varsity color will be given one particular color, okay? Grouping based on this species, okay? And X level is petal length, Y level is petal width. Why like this? Because I am not taking all the four uh, features that is sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width. I am taking only the last two, okay, petal length and petal width because we can so that we can easily visualize the concept in two dimensional plot, okay. So let me just run this particular part and show you the particular data set, okay. I hope you have seen multiple times this one in my earlier videos also. So this is basically setosa set, this is basically versicolor set, this is virginica set, okay. Here this is petal width, here this is petal length, all right. Now what we have done, see, we need to create that many number of binary classes, okay, uh, the, that should be equal to total number, uh, we, we need to create that many number of binary classifier equal to total number of unique classes present in our data set, right. So first of all, we need to calculate total number of unique classes. Our classes are stored in Y variable. So classes equal to unique of y, it is going to give us total number of unique classes present in our data set, okay. If I just run this particular part, you can see here, I will just write classes and hit enter. See, it will be giving us total number of unique classes, that is, that is setosa, versicolor and vertical. all right. Then I am calculating the length of the classes, okay, because I want to make the code generalized, okay, not only for this, so that I am writing like this, otherwise I can, I know that there are only three unique classes, 
but uh, so that you can use the same code as template for any multi class classification problem i am using this okay so just we will use this for multiple use cases okay then we need to create total three different binary classifier right for three uh, different classes so the classifiers we need to store somewhere obviously the best data structure to store this kind of classes is nothing but cell okay i hope you know cell data structure if you have studied data structure part of matlab svm models okay this will store our all the binary classifier model okay so models dual form okay just joking uh, you can give any variable name svm model equal to class of ms comma 1 okay so uh, 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 sorry cell of ms comma 1 okay what this indicates that many number of rows and only one column okay i hope you can understand then what we are doing very very important part now the time comes training okay and how we are training for the one versus all we for each classifier we are taking one particular class as positive rest all are negative okay then how we can do that very simple we need some comparison okay we will pick up one particular class okay from the unique set of classes suppose set of so we are picking up and we need to apply a comparison equal to equal to operator i here we have to compare the classes okay whether one particular data is belonging to that class or not if yes then we will consider that as true if no we will consider that as false as simple as that so for this particular comparison the function is strcmp okay very very important see how it is working let me just show you here i write clc strcmp okay i am writing first one as a capital h with hello and next one small h with hello okay see you will be getting answer as logical zero because they are not same okay suppose i am making this as also capital i will be get, getting logical one okay so this one we can use for determining uh, the two classes are same or not that is creating basically that kind of data where we will pick up one class and our one particular line of code will make all the data points belonging to that particular class as true and rest all the data points belonging to other classes as false so for that this one okay indx equal to str cmp y comma classes of j so first it, what we are doing we are basically traversing throughout the unique classes whatever we have got here any ml this one is basically uh, for iterating that many number of classes which is basically unique in our data set okay suppose you are writing a new m e l this is going to give us number of elements present in one array like that see here 1 2 3 4 5 total four elements if you just cheat enter you will be getting four okay nothing to worry about any function all functions are simple math works has documented all this beautifully just if you have any doubt you can go to the documentation check that okay or you can simply write here help n u m e l just cheat enter will be getting detailed description about that just it will take some time to load okay because you know matlab is a very big uh, software and uh, providing us huge amount of inbuilt functions see any anyway, ml is number of elements in an array or subscripted array expression okay now where was uh, our discussion yes so what it will do suppose initially classes of j initially j value is 1 so it is going to take setosa and y value y is basically storing the labels okay it may be setosa it may be virginica it may be farsicolor so indx will give us 1 for all the setosa and rest 0 for farsicolor and virginica and that we are going to use along with our uh, independent features the, this indx is going to be our outcome and we are going to train one model using fit csvm as we have used earlier also csvm model of j okay remember this curly bracket because this is cell we are storing our models in cell for accessing cell you have to write like this okay remember then class names okay class names is like name value pair okay what it what it uh, what you have to pass you have to pass first one is the uh, negative class second one is the positive class so indx is going to give us one logical array of 0 and 1 0 means false 1 means true so i am passing false and true as simple as that then standard i is equal to true you may ask why because see i have not done any data preprocessing i have not as uh, 
applied features ke thing so that i am basically standardizing here if you are separately doing no need to give this okay then kernel function linear if you don't give this no problem because by default it takes linear kernel only but if you want to change to gaussian or maybe polynomial of any polynomial order then you can give this okay later i will show you the effect of changing kernel function so that i have kept okay so our model is ready now what we need to do to plot the decision surface or decision boundary again we are going to use that mesh grid part whatever we have used in earlier uh, visualization of decision tree and ann okay minimum to maximum we are doing then we are applying mesh grid and creating one data set okay then again this particular part is very very important and i guess some of you might find this bit difficult but try to understand very very important part okay see once we have built all the classifier what we need to do once we have built all the classifier one new data point come we need to get the probability that that newly coming data point is belonging to the positive class of that particular classifier what is the probability right and the maximum probability we are going to take right so that part is done here so first n n is size of x comma 1 so basically x is basically our data set which we are going to use for this visualization purpose and scores is basically storing the probability that that particular data point belonging to the positive class of a particular classifier okay n comma any ml classes obviously it is quite clear why this is happening because for any particular data point we will be getting three different probability values right so total number of columns will be total number of unique classes or total number of uh, classifiers whatever we have formed and n is basically total number for each data point we will be getting three three values so obviously the total number of rows will be total number of data points so that's what we have put at n okay so zeros n comma numeral classes okay so it is going to create one matrix zero matrix for each total number of rows will be total number of data points and total number of columns are three here okay that is total number of unique classes or total number of what classifiers we have formed and then again we are traversing throughout our total number of unique classifier and this time we are predicting okay whole data set x using one particular binary classifier whatever we have formed like here when j value is 1 it is going to take the svm model of one whatever is stored in that cell array then when j value is 2 it is going to the second binary classifier when j value is 3 it is going to take the third binary classifier like that now initially in k min and decision tree what we have seen we have only taken one output parameter whatever matlab was given us the predicted class but here we don't require the predicted class we require what is the probability that the particular data point will belong to that particular class okay what is the positive for that positive class so that probability part we require so that i am taking another parameter score and in the second column of score the probability or the confidence that the particular data point is belonging to the positive class is stored okay that is our requirement right so i am storing that in the scores of colon comma j equal to score of colon comma 2 why score of colon comma 2 because in that the probability that the particular uh, all the data points probability of all the data points will belong to particular class will be stored and colon comma j means for all rows we need to substitute and this is for first column there is first classifier for second classifier also same for third classifier also same thing we need to implement right then we are taking the maximum one so you may ask why this bracket we are using there is a reason okay let me discuss here suppose i am taking one array a equal to 1 2 3 4 4 okay what is a a is 1 2 3 4 now if you simply write max of a it will give us the maximum value with respect to column in between 1 and 3 maximum value is 3 in between 2 and 4 maximum value is 4 so it is going to give us 3 4 but here we for each data point row wise the positive class probability is stored so we need to sort get the maximum value row wise right so maximum of a then give this kind of uh, square bracket empty square bracket then write 2 it is going to give us the maximum value row wise okay like here in between 1 and 2 maximum value is 2 in between 3 and 4 maximum value is 4 so it is going to give us 2 4 okay this is the use case of this one okay so we are doing that 
and then here max code also we are doing why because we need we don't we are not considering that value part okay try to understand either one or two or three the index we require who for which class we are getting maximum value that index is max score basically right and the colon is basically that particular value okay value part we are not bothered that much we are bothered with where the maximum is appearing in between three classes okay and this is our predicted sorry this max score is basically nothing but our uh, the predicted class for that newly coming data point okay so what we are going to next we are going to next uh, visualization part that is we are going to uh, uh, group and then visualize using gs scatter based on max score okay cym like we have used earlier and this particular part is plotting our original data points using uh, a dot line style okay and title is id classification regions okay so control a and evaluate selection if i just run the whole code see how beautifully our svm where we have seen that it is used for binary classification but using one versus all or one versus rest we are able to classify multi we are able to use this same svm concept for multi class classification okay see this region is for setosa this is for uh, varsi color this is for varchinika now you can play with this okay just you can change kernel function to polynomial okay i am not specifying polynomial order so by default it is going to take three but if you want you can change the polynomial order according to your choice using polynomial order part okay see now this time we are getting different uh, decision region okay see here curve nature is coming okay then the last one popularly used rbf or gaussian right Gaussian, if we use, obviously we should get very smooth and beautiful decision boundary because Gaussian itself curve is very smooth and beautiful. See how beautiful we are getting the decision boundary, right? So this is how one versus all concept is used in MATLAB for multi-class classification. Okay, I hope the concept is clear to you. Same code will be posted in the description box or in the comment section. If you want, you can check there. Thank you for watching.